Hello. So in the last episode, we looked through Google Images and we found some images of ruins that we might want to use as references for our um, project. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch up some of our more inspirational pieces. Uh, we're going to try and establish the kinds of ruins we want. Now, this is all brainstorming. I'm not a professional um, artist, and I'm certainly not a professional artist at uh, doing this kind of, of paintwork. So you will find that I'm not going to be very careful about um, making it look good. Instead what I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure out what I want. Now I've gotten a very very big canvas here. You can see that I'm nowhere near a hundred percent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom into a hundred percent and that's actually too tight for real paintwork but it's just right for thinking out loud to yourself. Um, and I'm trying to find a good paintbrush here. Uh, maybe I can use some oil paints. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. So what we've got is uh, we've got some ruins. And the basic idea of the ruins is that there's going to be some kind of well uh, oasis where you'll have a well house. And that'll be the centerpiece of the game's little adventure. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's where your base will end up being uh, or what, but um, there will be water running around this place and uh, the sun will shine down in just such a way that it looks nice all the time, you know. Uh, so this will be the wet spot in the desert and everything around it is going to be bone dry. But of course there are plants growing everywhere, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out exactly how we want this thing to look. Um, everywhere. So at the moment I've got this approach, right, where we are coming up to this this uh, area and then over here I've got these raised temple area and you can't really see what's up above because you're from too low down uh, and you might remember that. Well this raised area here doesn't really make any sense in terms of it just being raised. Um, while I'm sure that there are people who just randomly put things on top of pillars, it's really a good opportunity to use pillars in an interesting way. So uh, if we look back at the... My pen doesn't go far enough to the left. If we look back at this, there are some examples of pillars which are interesting. Uh, here's some. So you can see here that rather than... The, the pillars are used primarily to create space outside, but the interiors... There's no like giant stone slab that gets raised off of the ground. It's all uh, just the pillars are outside of the giant stone slab. The only reason you'd raise a giant stone slab off the ground like that is if you were going to have uh, water or floods. And I think that that's a good point. Um, we can build this kind of with the assumption that it would have been flooding pretty regularly. So this part of the ruin, this is not where uh, the water is. Uh, the, we'll, we'll be going down into the depths where the actual water flows now. But in the past, maybe the water flooded in this direction. And so therefore, they put it up on pillars to keep it out of the water. But they wouldn't put it up on stilts like, you know, like a house in the bayou. What they would do is they would build uh, the arcs, the arches, so we would have an interior space here where water could flow through, but it wouldn't be just an open space. It would be like a sluice work or something where there would be some some actual uh, interior shapes going on, and it wouldn't just be an empty, hollow area. And I think that that's probably a great idea. Uh, and if we look back at our catalog of pictures, uh, this is hard to do when I don't when I'm not able to use both screens. We have plenty of images of what that sluice work might look like. We could have it like this with the big heavy area, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to preserve these trees for further into the into the area. I'd like to leave this area mostly desolate. So if we look at desolate, well we've got of course this brickwork here from Alxnar. Um, and I'd like, I'd like this brickwork, the damaged brickwork, but it's not suitable for a supportive pillar. So we could get something like this, uh, and that works pretty nice, but those are obviously gateway pillars rather than supportive pillars. 
the rival abbey, these are supportive pillars. So I'm thinking that we're going to be using something like this for our um, image in here. And uh, so we would have these very deep pillars, deep, sharp areas like this, where they would have uh, uh, a lot of inset depth to them. Uh, and that would give us a lot of support and a lot of structural integrity. And it would explain why it's still around, uh, even though it's got a big weight on it and lots of time has passed. So above this is the question, what would we have above it? Well, as you might remember, the, the abbey that we were looking at has a second story, but the second story is empty. I don't believe that there is, in fact, like a floor there. I think it actually is just uh, a very, very tall building. So all of these, all these are doing are supporting uh, the next story up in terms of walls, supporting walls. Uh, but here we're trying to support a, uh, a temple. And so I guess we have to decide what kind of temple we want. And what I think we're going to want to have is uh, some sort of edge work around the edge of the upper columns here. Um, because the idea is that people would have come here, not in droves, but in small numbers, uh, to show their reverence for the god of water, or the goddess of water, whichever. Um, and so we wouldn't need it to be like safety railing, but we would need it to... Uh, have an edging, and I think that that edging could be mostly crumbling away, and it could provide debris down here uh, by falling onto the ground in places, uh, and that would show that the water hasn't come by in quite a while, because if it had, it would have washed these away. But since this is sluice work, I think that there needs to be some sluicing. And rather than the sluicing coming out of this direction, I think it needs to come out of this direction. So what I'm thinking is uh, that there is a sluice way coming out here. And I don't know whether I want it covered or not. I could do more research into sluices or something. Uh, but it would be some kind of brick sluice work. And it would come out over here and it would go way, way down. And you know that broken path that you're following? That might be a good thing for it to be. Because um, obviously this sluice work would get, get degraded by long weather and turn into just a pile of bricks leading up here. And that means that in here, this part doesn't just like hit the mountain and stop. Instead, this part leads down to the inner sluice work, uh, perhaps grated off so you can't get in, grated off or collapsed so you can't get in, until later when you've defeated the boss or whatever and you can walk back out this way. But the idea is that water would come up through here and flow. So the temple we've got up top, we have a number of pillars uh, already defined in our in our level map. Now, there's no particular reason that they have to stay defined, but I liked the idea of it being a covered uh, area, um, and I liked the idea of this staying intact as some sort of pseudo miraculous structure, uh, sort of like maybe the the power of of the the goddess or god of water remains even after so long because uh, her shrine still has this giant stone slab suspended over it uh, and none of the pillars have given way. And we can back that up by having um, the shadows here be noticeable and so you've got all of the hot sun pounding down outside and then in here you've got shadows which are noticeable even when you're down down here looking at it. So you don't have... Uh, it looks cool regardless. So maybe I'll stencil that in. Look. This is not a writing pen. Let's go ahead and get one for a second here. Looks cool in here. And then, of course, we have some kind of actual uh, temple structure in here uh, that represents uh, the goddess of water and uh, her various magical doodads. Um, that won't be activated when you first go in, obviously. Very Zelda of Legend, Legend of Zelda E. So we've got broken staircases leading down into a larger area, and you might remember that previously we entered in through this area here, uh, and I think what we're going to do now instead is we're going to have this sluice work. Uh, you're going to go in up here, but this will lead to a dead end. So you're going to actually come out this direction. And that means that we're going to need this to be uh, an actual solid wall. A wall of brick. 
We can have it broken in places with rubble. But the idea is that you'll have to try and find your way up. So what I'm thinking is uh, this wall has actually collapsed, collapsed, and that will allow you to find your way up into this area. So we're still going in at the same place that we were before, except for now it's going to be a dirt, debris, you know, collapsed area rather than the pathway that we had. And as before, we want to actually block your view up into this chamber. Um, so we had this wall here, and we'll continue to have the wall there. But at this point, we're no longer thinking about the specific layout of the level. Now we're starting to think of the pieces that we're going to need in order to design this level. So we've already come up with a specific structure here, and this is a very repetitive set of support frameworks. Um, now, how well those support frameworks can be reused in the rest of the level is a good question because there probably aren't a whole lot of spaces that needed sluicing but I kinda like the idea of a repeated sluice area where there is one sluice channel but you can't get through more than 20, in, 20 meters of it at a time because of all of the collapses and grids and all that stuff locking it down uh, grates so I'm thinking that these might these might be quite handy and show up over and over and over again over the course of the areas always where there was water and where there may be water again if you successfully complete your missions. Oh my gosh, it's already been 11 minutes and we've only done that much. So, uh when you are building the rest of this, I was really really interested in that broken brickwork. Um so if we look at that broken brickwork again, these this damaged brickwork here it looks fantastic um, and so I want to make a lot of the temple out of that in the desert area and this is the desert area so we would have some kind of broken brickwork here and uh, this is not an exact diagram of where it would be I just want to jot down the fact that it exists uh, now we should probably use the same basic pattern as the sluices in terms of it being uh, much more thin and supportive than the example that I was showing back there. Um, but the question is what is over here and over here? What kind of walls do these have? Uh, one, to, one example, uh, one thing we could do is just repeat the pattern over and over and over and there are times when we're going to want to do that but another thing we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to have various walls that are coming out in this area but rather than just building straight up brick walls like you might intend to do and might want to do we should take note that these ruins rarely have long stretches of brick walls uh, because those tend to get knocked down instead they've got a pattern of uh, gates within gates and paths made of gates and they've got temple uh, uh, ta not temples um, pillars thank you so we can think of this in terms of the walls being the spaces between pillars and uh, and other and other kinds of constructions. Um, now, if we think of this in terms of it being a temple to water, then we can think of all of these walls as being flowing. So we can think of them as always going up and down. So they're never going to just be straight flat walls, and they're probably never going to be. They're, probably, they're not going to be straight like across the top, but they're also not going to be straight in the bottom. They're going to be curved uh, in terms of uh, where they go and how they are um, moving. Because this is a temple to water, and I think that straight walls would be uh, gauche, don't you think? I think so. No, this is not a, an airbrush. That's fine. and all of these walls will have this lovely chunky brickwork if I can manage it <laughs> and of course these thick walls give us a lot of opportunities to have shadowed spaces beyond them and the shadowed spaces could hold monsters or treasures or pools of forgotten water or whatever else we want to put behind them so I think that that's a big plus now when we move deeper into the area we're going to come across the um, uh, the deeper areas that still have water flowing through them because the goddess's power hasn't faded completely uh, so 
when you get to that sort of area, uh, we are going to want to have plants. Well, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and pan over to a new part of the paper. And if we look into our list of these, and we just kind of look around some, we've got plenty of references for plants. Uh, we've got this, but this is not quite what we need. We've got this, which I really love. Uh, we've got this, which is just great. These towering foliages um, are, are a fantastic idea. I love the idea of huge, huge trees. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking that there's like a bowl shape or maybe a ravine shape and the trees are at the sides and they just kind of tower over everything and they even come up out of the ravine and uh, and crowd over the area. So if you looked at it from a distance, it might look like a ravine, right? Uh, something like this, a crack in the ground. But what would happen is you'd have these huge trees pouring everywhere, huge being a relative term with this picture because I'm just sketching randomly. Uh, but you'd have, uh, so the temple might be here, and this would be the temple you'd meet, and then there'd be like some kind of rocky barrier, so you had to cross through the temple. And when you come out on the far side of the temple, there are these trees everywhere, and you have to work your way down this, uh, this ravine step by step, but there's trees on both sides in every direction, uh, and you have to steadily lose more and more of the light as you go deeper and deeper into the coverage of the trees. So as we're thinking about it, there are a few kinds of plants that we're going to need to work with here. Um, so that picture ended up looking slightly lewd, but it won't when we are down on the ground. If we look at it like this, we are thinking about an area where the trees have died. At the top of the ravine, all of the trees should be uh, no more. Um, they're just baked to to a crisp by the by the fires of the sun and the lack of any kind of rain. So they are in fact just husks, maybe even just broken entirely like this. And of course the uh, the trees are inspired by that one image that we saw earlier, where you can actually go in through the fingers of the of the tree uh, deeper into the ruins, and this. Um, we can go with the same kind of spired approach, but I actually think square might be a better idea here. Uh, if we do spired, then the tree roots will conflict too much. There'll be too many spired shapes, uh, too many uh, wedge shapes. There'll be tree roots that are wedged, and then there'll also be ruins that are wedged, and it would look kind of awkward. It's better to let the ruins distinguish themselves by being the, op the opponent of the trees, I guess you could say. So you want to have the trees with the nice organic shapes, and then we will impose a very strong and rigid um, square shape on these buildings. Of course, this being the Temple of Water, those square shapes don't make any sense, right? Well, we can add that into the story, and we can make it so that these square shapes are buildings that were built later on um, and, and do not actually support the... Uh, the, the water goddess as, uh, as she was originally intended. Um, I also like the idea of there being, and these don't, these don't just go in, these go down, there are like staircases and stuff. I also like the idea of there being uh, toppled trees, just these massive, massive tree trunks that have been uh, fallen for so long that they've uh, just basically grown into the side of the the mountain here. But I like the idea that these are where you'll start to see the first sign of life. In the death of the larger trees you see moss hanging down and you see little uh, bushes growing on top of them or out of the sides of them. And we can use that if we would like. We can make that so that for example you could climb the moss and uh, and go up to the top of the tree and then maybe hop along and then go down some stairs or something. Uh, you can turn these into challenges as well. They don't have to just be set pieces. Um, but I think that that would be fun to have a giant tree here. Now in terms of what sort of ruins we're going to see at this location, I like the idea of this being a very stepped area. 
So uh, the ground is never flat. It's full of stairs. Uh, but the stairs are all going to be busted up and damaged, so we've got the debris everywhere from the broken stairs. And it's not unwalkable debris. It's just really um, shattered and broken to give you the impression that the area is damaged, because it is. Uh, and now, as for what that would look like, well, I'm thinking that that would look like a combination of... Click. A combination of these here and these here. Come on, mouse. So I like the idea of, as you get deeper, they start to get covered in moss. And uh, and smaller smaller stones covered in more moss, uh, more fine details, because whoever came afterwards and damaged the reputation or damaged the temple, uh, tried to subjugate the powers of of uh, whoever they were worshiping. Um, they had much better skills uh, in terms of building buildings, so they would build much finer brickwork, uh, different different feeling to it, different color bricks square structures and smaller steps but then you'd also have the larger chunks where the old temple was torn down and make, made way for this new temple except of course the place where you originally start which is still intact and as you get deeper you get more and more live plants and fewer and fewer dead plants uh, so I'm thinking that if you're walking along the side uh, of the ravine, you'd be going down a path which would be fairly wide. Uh, it wouldn't be a claustrophobic path. Um, but what it would be is uh, it would wind a lot. And in all of these areas would be just a massive number of things that get in your way. So you constantly have to do stuff like uh, go off into the side into a crack in the ravine um, that's not really even a building. It's just some place uh, that that uh, the rock gives way, and you have to work your way in there, uh, and then try and find a way through out down here somewhere because there's a huge tree blocking the path here, um, and just it's destroyed the path entirely. Uh, so um. I like the idea of these kinds of simple challenges because this lets you vary it up by blocking the path. It's a very simple thing to do, uh, but in return for blocking the path, you get to redirect the character, the player, into another kind of terrain, and they can fight other kinds of monsters or other kinds of puzzles or whatever. Um, I also like the idea that these are not actually hills as such. I like the idea that this is also largely brickwork. And in this area we can really show off the areas where the original brick layers were uh, responsible for building it versus the new brick layers because the new brick layers have much tighter brickwork uh, and the older ones uh, are not so much. Uh, so you can really see the difference in how they approach their, their brickwork. And now here you can see me putting back in some of the wedge shapes uh, as support structures. And I think that that is a fine idea, which is why I'm doing it. And then as you go down, you see these wedge shapes more and more because you're getting closer to the ground. So uh, you keep going in, and the next, next layer will have these wedge shapes. And eventually you'll be wandering through a maze of wedge shapes in the dark um, because the actual t path has fallen. But I like the idea that these wedge uh, shapes have greenery coming down over them. Maybe even some water from time to time. And of course, this whole area is very much more shadowed than the uh, than the area up top because it's getting deeper into the uh, into the ravine. But as you switch from one side of the ravine to the other, 
the sunlight hits you full on or you're in complete shadow. And I think that contrast could be a lot of fun, and you could fight completely different kinds of monsters depending on which side of the ravine you're on. That's a rough sketch. Um, the trees don't feel big enough yet, but I think you understand the sort of thing I'm going for, and I've been talking about this for half an hour, so I think this is a good time to stop. So this is the sort of basic sketching I do when I'm trying to figure out what I want things to look like. And with this in mind, what we'll do in the next episode is I'll break this apart into pieces that can be built in Blender.